Well, I have um, the task of it, uh, extolling the virtues of the groom to you all, and uh, to give some nuggets of information about how this young man ticks, but uh, not just yet. First of all, I want to start off by saying something that I said at a previous wedding recently, um, and because um, I thought it was, it was good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that is that we can be confident um, in Matt, going to, um, that Matt will be a wonderful husband to Rachel, um, that this marriage is going to work. Um, it won't just work, it will be a blessing to them and to many others. Now our confidence, ladies and gentlemen, is not in Matt's past performance uh, or even his current abilities. Our confidence is in the God that he trusts and believes in, our God um, that he believes in. Because our God is a gracious God and he's committed to Matt and Rachel, committed to making their marriage work, okay? Um, that's where our confidence lies. So do bear that in mind as I tell you some stories. <laughs> <laughs> People said it would be easy to talk about Matt because he's such a, a sort of um, a lively character, and that's true, but because he is such a lively character, it's been very hard to capture some of the essences of Matt. So I turned to my friends and I did a little research. So thank you for all who took part in my little uh, SMS text messaging research <laughs> survey. Um, the participants were asked to describe Matt Lola in one word. Uh, analysts have uh, been um, poring over the results, and they've concluded that if all the descriptions were put together, the result would be a teddy bear with attitude. <laughs> a, peculiar mix, a peculiar mix of the tough and the gentle, where his growl is worse than his bite, at times huggable and others bossy. Women commented on his warmth, men on his candour, and the children his size. <laughs> Big was the word that was used a lot. Big personality, big heart, big pants. <laughs> and, Matt, and, Matt is, and Matt is not one to uh, slip quietly past you in a crowd. He, he makes an impact when you first meet him. And I would suggest that you do well to ignore your first impressions of Matt. <laughs> Something which the immigration services at the Home Office fail to do. <laughs> <laughs> Matt was immediately detained and then deported back to America. <laughs> Files on his deportation are strictly confidential and it's unclear as to what the reasons were for not allowing him in, although I'm sure you can all think of a few. <laughs> Undeterred, Matt made his way back to us and has successfully infiltrated the British society, securing his status now in the UK by using his famous international chat-up lines and winning the heart of the lovely Rachel. <laughs> it seems he's here to stay. Well, I'm surprised that uh, more surveillance hasn't been done on Matt, and I believe he poses a credible threat to national security. <laughs> if MI5 had done a better job and questioned any of Matt's family, they would have found some disturbing evidence from the past. As his mum described him the other day, Matt is a complete pyromaniac. <laughs> Having a keen interest in fire, his experiments began at the age of 11, when he examined the combustible qualities of the common frog. <laughs> some more serious experiments, he then tried chucking a load of cologne out of his bedroom window into a bush below, then decided to leap into the same bush with a match in his hand. <laughs> Leads to say that event was one of the many self-inflicted injuries of his childhood. Matt's interest in all things that go boom has uh, continued even through to recent times. I myself have had a near-death experience due to this interest. One afternoon upon entering our house, there was the characteristic smell of gas, and as I proceeded to the kitchen, there was the haze that comes from uh, a gas hole being left unlit for four hours. We had a few words about that, didn't we, mate? <laughs> Rachel, you, uh, you might need to reconsider your household insurance policy to see if it covers forgetfulness and indeed uh, clumsiness after yesterday's accident. <laughs> I have to tell you though, Rachel, that you're a very lucky woman to be, ma to be marrying Matt. As there have been many would-be Mrs. Lollers in Matt's life, the majority of whom were in his own imagination. <laughs> Matt has always 
always thought of himself as a bit of a player. <laughs> declaring that each of his sister's friends totally fancied him. <laughs> I too have heard him say such things, and it yeah. seems that no one can resist his charms, including the young man who works the blood donor unit. He's <laughs> something about his arms, I recall. <laughs> well, there has been one notable exception to this rule when Matt had quite a different impact on his sister's friends. At his older sister's birthday party with her friends around him, Matt thought to comment on a, a sea life program that happened to be playing on television. I didn't tell See, him this. <laughs> seeing an octopus, an octopus swim across the screen, he exclaimed, look how many testicles it has. <laughs> the girls didn't dare look. <laughs> Matt did a very good job today with his wedding vows. No mistakes as far as I notice. You see, he's not always been hot on vocabulary, and, and, and another embarrassing episode of his life is involved with uh, miscommunication. Matt believes he's a very good cook, and I hear that he'll be preparing the meals around the home whilst Rachel does everything else. I'm not sure how he managed that one. But uh, anyway, Matt likes to use the finest of ingredients, which is essential, isn't it, mate, to, to great cooking. So one Christmas, as some church women were tucking into some of Matt's homemade fudge, it came as some surprise when he explained what had gone into the recipe. Three cups of chocolate, three cups of butter, and one can of constipated milk. <laughs> 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 